Welcome everyone, so I will show you in this video the importance of considering a feedforward term in order to improve the performance of your PID controller. So let's uh, explain a little bit what is a feedforward term and how it, mm, it can improve the performance of our system. So if we take the, no, the, the case where, where we don't have feedforward terms, so let's say I want to uh, follow a certain theta desired. So basically I'm starting from zero. I'm starting from the initial position where I'm supposing that I don't have any information about my system dynamics and I'm letting the PID controller to do all the required stuff to, to drive my system starting from this point until reaching in fact the desired value and this will take some time for the integral term and for the PID controller in order to converge from the initial condition to the desired theta. And so, I will ask myself, since I know what theta desired I wish to follow, and since I have some information about my system dynamics, of course, my knowledge is not perfect, it's not ideal, because there will be certainly be some nonlinear effects that are not modeled in my dynamics, there will be some noises related to the sensor I'm using, some external perturbations, so I won't have the ideal solution. However, I can anticipate or I can guess like a solution that can drive the system from the initial uh, zero position to somewhere near, in fact, my uh, perfect solution. So let's say it's right here, and this will be my fit forward term. And in this case, I will be asking my PID controller to drive me or to compensate only the error between the, the fit forward term or the non-ideal solution and the ideal solution or the theta desired I wish to follow. So you can clearly see uh, I will need less time in order to converge and I will be more robust to external perturbation using the feed forward term. So let's take an application or the on the on the pendulum system. So if you consider the differential equation. So in our case we wish to follow a fixed theta desired. So in this case theta dot desired is equal to zero, so I can eliminate this, this term. And of course, my desired acceleration will also be equal to zero. And then I will get, finally, only these terms equal to zero, where I substitute theta by theta desired. And by calculating the solution in this case, I will find out that the control input uh, needed to follow this theta desired is equal to mgl multiplied by theta desired. So. This is what I have done in this uh, in this uh, simulation or in this uh, model. So I have taken the theta desired, I have multiplied by MGL, and then I have added a switch. And uh, this switch was added only to show you to compare, in fact, the performance of the controller with and without using a feed forward term using this Boolean activate feed forward term. And I also prepared the small application. Uh, like the one that we have built in the previous videos. However, in this case, I have added a button called Compare FF just to launch two successive simulation with and without a feed forward term. So let's try to launch these successive simulation and on my simulating data inspector, as you can see, and as what is expected. So in the case that I don't use uh, a feed forward term, you can see that the PID controller took long time in order to converge however by adding the feed forward term i can uh, uh, improve my performance and then i will be more robust to external perturbation and to system noise and i have added the application of the feed forward so including the button to do the comparison of the of the of the two simulations and i have added also the simulating model including the feed forward part in case you wish to try it yourself i'll leave the link in the description another time so you can go to the github and download all the stuff and in the next video what i'm going what we're going to try to do together is that we're going to use the parametric sweep that we have seen in the last video or in the previous in one of the previous videos and then we're going to try to use it in order to optimize the gains to our model
Thank you everyone for watching. If you find that the content was useful for you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and see you next time. Thank you all.